morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We are your go-to source on all things health, nutrition, as well as prescription drugs. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, if you have questions about our true skin health products, or if you just have a comment or a success story, 844 844- 236-6010 is our number. If we left you on hold yesterday or in the past and you didn't get a chance to get on uh, get on the air, give our uh, let our call screener know that we left you on hold and we'll put you first up at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or if you would like to join me in my mission to help educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one has enjoyed the benefits of nutritional supplementation and now you'd like to pay it forward and make some money at the same time, you want to join the Brightside Ben team, you want to start a longevity business for a one-time $25 fee. You can have your own business and enjoy all the tax benefits and personal benefits associated with having your own business, not being your own boss having your own business without having to invest in infrastructure or all the other accoutrements that are associated with having a business, call for a one-time $25 fee. Please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. They can give you the scoop, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team or purchase products off of brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And also want to remind you to take a look at our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with aging skin, thin skin, acne-prone skin, vitamin C and vitamin A are the two most important ingredients you could ever put on your skin. Fatty vitamin C in generous amounts, as well as vitamin A. You'll find those in our Truth Treatment products. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, water, silicon, oil. Propylene glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All righty, welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking about estrogen and, and uh, the enzyme aromatase, A-R-O-M-A-T-A-S-E. Aromatase is the enzyme that converts male hormone into female hormone, testosterone into estrogen. Bodybuilders are always thinking about this enzyme, aromatase, especially bodybuilders who are using steroid drugs, testosterone drugs. If you've ever heard about testosterone supplementation causing feminization, this is the reason excessive testosterone will get converted into female hormone. Aromatase is also used to treat estrogenic diseases, estrogenic cancers. Remember, estrogen is a growth substance for better or worse. It induces cell division. It's pro-inflammatory. It changes the way minerals enter into cells. This is why estrogen causes water retention. 
It also affects the movement of blood. Estrogen encourages clotting of blood. Estrogen promotes leakiness of toxins into the blood, i.e. leaky gut syndrome. If you're dealing with estrogen dominance or if you are exposed to what are called xenoestrogens, foreign estrogens, whether from plastics or prescription drugs, you are increasing the likelihood of leaky gut. If you've already got a problem with your immune system, leaky gut being the source of immune system problems, the major source of immune system problems, such as autoimmunity, you're playing with fire if you're on HRT or birth control. If you have an autoimmune disease, which is a, one of the results of a leaky gut syndrome, in my humble opinion, you are absolutely crazy if you're using hormone replacement therapy. If you have an autoimmune disease of any kind, you should never be on hormone replacement therapy, and that includes the birth control pill, which is not exactly hormone replacement therapy, but it's a way of getting fake hormones into the body. Autoimmunity is a digestive problem, it's a leaky gut problem, and estrogen can exacerbate it, whether that estrogen is natural estrogen or it's estrogen that you're getting from fake estrogen, drug estrogen, or from chemical-based estrogen. This is why progesterone can be so helpful for folks dealing with leaky gut syndrome or folks dealing with autoimmune issues. Progesterone being the balancing hormone for estrogen. Nobody should ever be exposed to estrogen without making sure they have enough progesterone. And progesterone on its own can be very helpful just as a, a way of calming the body down and, and calming the immune system down as well. So there's a major relationship between intestinal health, leaky gut syndrome, inflammation, immunity, cell division, and estrogen, thus the relevant, and cancer and thus the relevance of aromatase inhibitors, aromatase inhibitor drugs. And everybody, or pretty much most people who will have a, uh, who've been diagnosed with breast cancer will get put on some kind of pharmacological aromatase inhibitor. And aromatase inhibitors have their own side, of, side effect profile. Remember, estrogen is a, is a building substance. We've been ripping on estrogen, but you can't make connective tissue or fibers without estrogen, and this is why people on aromatase inhibitors end up with problems with their bones. Estrogen being important for helping strengthen or maintain the strength of bones. It's not a bone-building hormone, but it can help you maintain the strength of your bones, and AIs, aromatase inhibitors, can cause problems with increased fractures or bone weakness or even osteoporosis. There's natural aromatase inhibitors that you can use. If you've been put on a prescription drug, an aromatase inhibitor prescription drug, you may be able to lower your dose of the toxic pharma uh, pharmacological aromatase inhibitor by using natural aromatase inhibitors, or I should say herbal aromatase inhibitors, or, or actually natural is a better term because there are some aromatase inhibitors that are not necessarily natural. We talked about indole-3-carbonyl or I3C, diindolylmethane or D DIM, you may have heard of these, I3C and DIM. DIM is a little bit more, more potent than I3C. I3C is a little bit more broad spectrum. Both of them are found in cruciferous vegetables, and in my opinion, everybody should be enjoying their broccoli and their cabbage and their Brussels sprouts and, and cauliflower. These cruciferous vegetables are wonderfully protective against bad estrogens, so-called catechol estrogens. We're going to talk about those here in a minute. And xenoestrogens. If you take DIM, you may notice a change in your urine color. Uh, that is a sign that estrogens are being flushed out of your body. There's also uh, nutrients that you can take that aren't exactly aromatase inhibitors, but can help balance out estrogen, vitamin A and E. We'll talk about those here in a little bit. Uh, there's herbal aromatase inhibitors, chrysin, uh, C-H-R-Y-S-I-N. You'll see that in various uh, formulations. Bodybuilders are well aware of chrysin. Chrysin is found in passion flower. It is a flavonoid, and these flavonoids are also, in general, all flavonoids are going to have some estrogen blocking or aromatase inhibiting effects. Mushrooms have some of these compounds. Grapes, wine, resveratrol, soy, something called nerogenin, which is found in citrus fruits that has um, aromatase inhibiting effects and can help block estrogen. Nettles, 
Even vitamin D is a natural aromatase inhibitor. And it's, this is one of the reasons why uh, getting out in the sun can be so beneficial, even though we hear so much horrible things about the sun. But if you're dealing with an estrogenic health issue, vitamin D is a natural aromatase inhibitor. If you're thinking about using supplemental vitamin D instead of getting out in the sun, nowhere near as good. The vitamin D that we get from the sun is much more powerful and important as a, as a nutrient, as a hormone actually, than a supplemental vitamin D. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return on the bright side right after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist has been here. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you've tried to get on the show and haven't been able to in the past, we've got a bunch of open lines for you. 844-236-6010. And we'll get your calls here in, a, in our next segment at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. I love talking to my smart listeners. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, our Truth Skin Health products, or if you just have a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Of course, if you want to purchase any longevity products, please go to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, and take a look at all the longevity products, including my favorite, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, multivitamin, mineral, and multinutrient powder that you drink throughout the day if you're dealing with digestive health issues and nutritional supplements may not be your ordinary pills and capsules and tablets may not be doing the trick for you liquid nutrition is the way to go in pharmacy school we learn that liquid nutrition is the best way to make sure that you're absorbing all of your nutrients when uh, nutritional supplements are dissolved in liquid they bypass any issues you may have with bile or pancreatic secretions or stomach acid and many of us have these kinds of digestive health problems and making sure that or li using liquid nutrition is a great way to make sure that you're absorbing all of your nutrients that's why soups are so helpful that's why smoothies are so helpful and of course and that's why your Beyond Tangy Tangerine is so helpful, and that's why it works so quickly. Most folks get results within 24 to 48 hours, results like more energy, results like appetite suppression, results like lower blood pressure and better blood sugar control. You can find our Beyond Tangy Tangerine and all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. All right, so if you are on an aromatase inhibitor type drug, and most folks, many folks who have uh, breast cancer or been diagnosed with, or are precancerous maybe get put on a drug like Femera or Arimidex, Aromacin, Teslac, these are so-called aromatase inhibitor drugs, you might want to think about using natural aromatase inhibitors. Natural aromatase inhibitors have been used in the bodybuilding world for many years. Things like quercetin, chrysin, turmeric, I'm not sure actually if turmeric is exactly an aromatase inhibitor, but turmeric does have an anti-estrogen effect. Uh, vitamin D, before we went to break, we talked about vitamin D as a natural aromatase inhibitor. Getting out in the sun, of course, is your best way to get vitamin D. Uh, there's a substance called narigenin, N-A-R-I-N-G-E-N-I-N. N -A -R -I -N -G -E -N -I -N. That's found in citrus. There's lots of wonderful aromatase inhibitor substances that you can use without having to go into a drug. And by the way, if you are on a drug... If you are on a prescription aromatase inhibitor using naringenin, using chrysin, using tribulus, using uh, soy products or, or uh, soy isoflavones or any flavonoids can allow you to reduce your dosage. And this is always a good thing. If you can use substances, herbal substances, natural substances, non-toxic substances, nutritional substances that can allow you to reduce your dose of a drug, a pharmacological agent, that is all 
always going to be a good thing. So if you are on a aromatase inhibitor, I would highly suggest you get on my Bergamax, which you can get from brightsidehealth.com, or, or quercetin, or diazidin, or genistin. These are isoflavones that are found in soy. That will help you reduce your dose of toxic pharmacological agents. There's nutrients that can help the body process estrogen. The B vitamins are especially important, and this is one of their most, in my opinion, this may be the most important role for the B vitamins, is how they help the body process hormones, especially steroid hormones. You don't hear much about vitamin B6 for steroid hormone processing and steroid hormone regulation. You don't hear much about pantothenic acid or vitamin B5 for helping the body process steroid hormones, but they're very important. Vitamin B6 in particular, in my opinion, this is one of the most underappreciated of all the nutrients, of all the vitamins. If you're on the birth control pill, you are making or you, your, uh, your body is using less vitamin B6. If you're on hormone replacement therapy, this can also inhibit how well your body uses vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is called pyridoxine, P-Y-R-I-D-O-X-I-N-E. Vitamin B6, pyridoxine, is incredibly important for helping the body process estrogen. It turns out that a lack of vitamin B6 is linked to excessive estrogen activity. And if you are concerned about estrogen toxicity, if you're on an aromatase inhibitor because your doctor has told you you have to reduce the actions of estrogen, if you're a bodybuilder or a weightlifter and you're concerned about making estrogen from testosterone, you might want to consider dosing yourself with vitamin B6, 100 milligrams a day or even 200 milligrams a day. There are some people who will tell you that vitamin B6 is toxic in high doses. I don't buy that. What you want to do, though, if you're taking vitamin B6 for, uh, if you're on the birth control pill, everybody on the birth control pill should be taking vitamin B6, or any hormone replacement therapy for that matter, should be on vitamin B6. But if you're concerned about any potential toxicity, there's no toxic vitamins, but if you're concerned about vitamin B6 and something you may have heard about with taking too much, what you want to do is you want to make sure you're taking your vitamin B6 in balance with all of the other B vitamins. This is where we get into trouble if we start to try to leverage the importance or the power of one individual B vitamin. In nature, the B vitamins exist as a complex. There's no single B vitamins found in nature. They're all together, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12. They all exist in nature together. So if you are gonna take vitamin B6, make sure you take it with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which will get you all of your B vitamins. From the Journal of Steroid, Bi Steroid Biochemistry, March 1987, quote, a deficiency in vitamin B6 has been reported to enhance estrogen responsiveness, unquote. That means when you're deficient in B6, estrogenic activity will increase, and of course, this is very relevant for folks dealing with estrogenic health challenges, including cancer. Vitamin B6 is found in most veggies, fruits, meats, dairy, eggs, fish, High protein foods tend to be good sources of vitamin B6 in addition to vegetation and produce. Beyond Tangy Tangerine also has vitamin B6. All of these sources, all these food sources of vitamin B6 may help regulate the effects of your steroid hormones. From the journal Nutritional Research Reviews, December 2001, elevation of vitamin B6 leads to decreased response to all of the steroid hormones, progesterone, androgens, as well as estrogen. Unquote. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing. Remember, hormones, you don't want too much, you don't want too little. Making sure you have enough vitamin B6 helps regulate the, the, uh, the effects of your steroid hormones, helps keep them at just the right level. There's also a, re a relationship between vitamin C and estrogen, and this is another one of the hidden benefits of vitamin C. Vitamin C helps you make hormones, helps you make brain hormones, helps you make steroid hormones. From the Journal of Clinical Gynecology and Obstetrics, January 2012, ascorbic acid, that is vitamin C, causes an increase in tissue levels of estrogen. The birth control pill, according to this article, can cause deficiencies in vitamin C, and this can have a negative effect on true estrogen activity, even as it dumps fake estrogen into the blood. Vitamin C is amazing, amazing stuff. And by the way, this is a study that was done on ascorbic acid. For you guys out there who believe somehow that ascorbic acid is not vitamin C, that should uh, disabuse you of that idea. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back. Okay, we are back on the break side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time at 24-7. 
on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, uh, and also uh, benfuchsarchives.com. You can also check out all the longevity products, as well as blog posts and news stories at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites or by calling 866-735-2470. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. A couple more things I want to say here about estrogen and uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C, ascorbic acid, that is, increases tissue levels of estrogen, according to the Journal of Clinical Gynecology and Obstetrics, January 2012, if you're going through menopause and your doctor is considering HRT, hormone replacement therapy, or you're considering it, you might want to think about making sure you're getting enough vitamin C. And one of the neat things about using nutrients in this fashion is while they're not like drugs, certainly you're not going to get the same kind of estrogenic effects that you will from drugs, they're natural. And your body knows how to process Process vitamin C, and even if you are going to be on hormone replacement therapy, using vitamin C may give you the same bang for your buck. You may get the same kind of benefits from a lower dose of your hormone replacement therapy by making sure that you're getting enough vitamin C. And this study, as I said before we went to break, from the Journal of Clinical Gynecology and Obstetrics, January 2012, was done on ascorbic acid. And I still hear from folks who should know better, uh, healthcare professionals and nutritionists, as well as lay people, that ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. Nonsense. Ascorbic acid is most certainly vitamin C. The ascorbic, the vitamin C receptor on cells, which pulls vitamin C into the cells, is an ascorbic acid receptor. It works with ascorbic acid. Am I saying that synthetic vitamin C is just as good as natural, the natural form that comes from directly from fruits and veggies? No, I'm not saying that. Obviously, it's very important to recognize that natural sources of vitamins are always best. And you cannot duplicate the effects of a natural source of vitamins with a synthetic source. However, these days, you don't know what the heck you're getting in your produce. And vitamin C is, is destroyed by heat. And vitamin C levels drop in produce as the produce is being frozen and transported and stored. So you just don't know what you're getting. And that's why, in my opinion, it's so important to be supplementing synthetic or not to be supplementing with things like ascorbic acid. Not as good as natural, the natural stuff, but still, there's wonderful benefits that you can get from ascorbic acid. And indeed, at the level of a cell, the cell is using ascorbic acid acid. It's not using cantaloupe or citrus, or it's not using the food sources that ascorbic acid is contained within. And any chiropractor or alternative practitioner, I hear a lot of them say, oh, ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. Nonsense. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. I've got a couple of cool stories here from the, uh, all right, well, I'll just read one of these here. This is from the Institute of Pathology and Allergy Research. Women with high sex hormone levels may be prone to asthma and allergies. Quote, women with high levels of the sex hormone estrogen are more susceptible to asthma, pollen, and food allergies, according to Austrian research, which noted that estrogen levels fluctuate with a stage of life changes. This is so important because we don't often appreciate the relationship between immune diseases, and that includes allergy and autoimmunity, which, by the way, affect way more women than men, and estrogen, or perhaps more accurately, toxic metabolites of estrogen, so-called catechol estrogen. We're going to talk about the importance of the liver for helping the body process estrogen and lowering the levels of these toxic metabolites, On a, uh, uh, not, perhaps not on our next program, but in a coming up program. Liver toxicity, which is exacerbated by prescription drugs, by hormone replacement therapy, by sugar, by trans fatty acids and poor dietary strategies, is a major culprit when it comes to estrogenic health challenges that estrogen gets blamed for. In other words, it's not the estrogen, but it's the liver toxicity, which is exacerbated by your prescription drugs, as well as diet and, and, and uh, cigarette smoke and sugar and, and hormone replacement therapy. Work on your liver. There's a really cool supplement that supports liver, doc liver detoxification of estrogen called calcium D-glucarate. 
calcium D glucurate. Glucurate is spelled G L U C A R A T E. Glucurate, and it's got some tremendous anti estrogen or estrogen processing benefits. You'll find it in cruciferous vegetables, but you can also get it as a supplement. And again, in my opinion, if you're going to be on HRT or if you're on uh, birth, the birth control pill or you're dealing with exposure to xenoestrogens from plastics or anything else, or really just anybody can benefit by supporting liver detox, uh, estrogen detoxification in the liver with calcium delta glucurate, calcium deglucurate, or also cruciferous vegetables. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Denise in Santa Cruz. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, and welcome to you, Ben. I look forward to seeing you this weekend. And okay. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, um, I have a friend who's uh, been doing the um, prostate um, radiation. He's in his third week. He's an um, older gentleman. So what can I insert? Prostate cancer? Did you, he has prostate yeah. cancer? Yeah. Okay, yes, that's a good question. A uh, couple things for the prostate. You want to, and this is true for all cancers, cancer is not really cancer. Prostate cancer is not really prostate cancer. It is prostate cell cancer. We got to stick that word cell in because that tells us what the problem is. Doctors are obsessed with the mechanics of disease. They look at the macro picture. They see the prostate and then they see, oh, well, the prostate is defective or, can or, or cancerous, so we're going to radiate the prostate or we're going to take out the prostate state out and we're going to treat the structure. They never talk about the cell, but that's where the cancer is occurring, is at the level of the prostate cell. So we want to make sure that the cell is healthy. It's as simple as that. A healthy cell will never turn cancerous. First and foremost, you want to start working with nutrition. Zinc is phenomenally important for all hormonal issues. The prostate is a, is a gland that is very receptive to hormones, especially estrogen, and there's a real important relationship between toxic estrogens and, uh, and prostate cancer. Using zinc is, is amazingly beneficial for all hormonal issues, whether it's male hormone or female hormone. So that's first thing, 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. Vitamin C, as we're, we alluded to before we went to our break, very important for helping stabilize hormones, also anti-cancer. I'd be using high doses of vitamin C as well. And then remember, the prostate is a fatty gland. We've talked about that before. So focusing on fat metabolism is also important, as well as fatty nutrients, using your ultimate EFAs vitamin A, vitamin E, as well as helping the body process fats with probiotics and digestive enzymes that can also be important. I would be doing all the estrogen detox strategies I can think of. So just have your friend review the last couple of programs. Uh, aromatase inhibitors, natural aromatase inhibitors, of course, are preferred to pharmacological ones. Chrysin and tribulus and stinging nettles and, and even flavonoids that you'll get in my, uh, my Bergamax product at brightsidehealth.com or from soy, uh, soy extract, although soy you have to be a little bit careful of. Uh, but, but using diazidin and genistin, which are isoflavones that are found in soy, that can have some, uh, provide some benefits there as well. Uh, fiber is extremely important for helping protect the intestines and feeding good bacteria, which are important for fats. And fiber also helps clear out excess estrogen, as does bentonite clay. So using fiber and bentonite, bentonite clay can be very helpful. Got a couple more things for you here, so don't go away. Uh, Denise, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a quick commercial break and come back with more of your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. 844-236-6010 is our number. Uh, we're talking to, to, to Denise in Santa Cruz about prostate cancer. Yeah. Denise, hey, Denise. Listen, I'm going to go really hey. fast because i got a bunch of calls I want to get to, and we're just running know, out of time. Thanks okay, for so, addressing this. I hear okay. you talk about it, but I need okay. a refresher. All right, good. Think of it as a fatty as a, a problem with the fatty system of the body. Using nutrition is always going to be helpful. Essential fatty acids, fatty vitamins, particular, particularly vitamins A and E, which can help balance out estrogen and can be important for all estrogenic health issues. And prostate cancer and uh, is in many ways an, an estrogenic problem. 
Uh, also, uh, I said zinc before we went to break, bentonite clay to help flush out excess estrogen, focus on liver detoxification using calcium deglucurate and all your liver strategies, overall health strategies, especially around blood sugar issues, uh, uh, prostate disease, whether it's BPH or prostate cancer are linked to insulin and blood sugar problems. So treating him like a diabetic is going to be important. Ketogenic diet can be very helpful. A progesterone cream, consider using progesterone cream, which can balance out excess estrogen as well. Vitamin C, all the B complex, especially vitamin B6. And then we haven't talked about boron and selenium, but we most certainly will, because both of those are very important. And boron especially is very, very underappreciated. Selenium can help regulate some of the effects of estrogen and also has anti-cancer properties and is, a, is one of the key features of most, uh, most uh, prostate formulas, including the prostate, F, prostate FX from Longevity. That might be something else that you want to think about. All right, I'm going to motivate okay. here. Denise, thank you so much for your call and make sure you say hi on a Saturday at the event in Santa Cruz. Okay, and for everybody, all right. Have a great day. Okay, take care, Denise. For everybody out there in Santa Cruz, I'm going to be uh, at uh, Kay's Worlings Memorial Service uh, this Saturday at KSCO. All right, let's go to Wes in California. Uh, Mike in California, I'm sorry. Uh, Wes, hang on, Wes. We're going to get to you next. Mike in California, good morning. What's up, buddy? Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, what's cooking? Okay, yeah, I, I remember my grandma used to uh, apply topopy on her face, beef tallow. I, oh. What are your thoughts on that? It's old wives' tale. It's mushy and soft, and so women probably think that, you know, it's kind of mushy and soft. It's not going to do anything for your skin. Uh, it's it's a lot of skincare products are not they're not exactly beef, beef tallow, but they're based on the same kind of chemistry that beef tallow of beef tallow. Uh, beef tallow is kind of softening, but it's not going to really do anything for your skin. It's sort of an old wives' tale. It's not it's not bad though. You know, as long as it's organic oh, okay. and there's no hormones in there. But it's not, there's nothing in beef towel that's going to do any benefit for your skin. Oh, okay. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Beef towel, by the way, is also a source for soap. Beef, beef towel is. All right. Uh, Wes in Idaho, thank you for calling back. We left you on hold yesterday. What's going on, Wes? Greetings, Ben. Uh, what's your opinion? Are they all the same? Uh, low dose naltrexone? Uh, for autoimmune multiple sclerosis in particular, your yeah. comment? Yeah, low-dose naltrexone can have some pain-relieving properties. It isn't curative, in my opinion, but it can definitely reduce pain. It's a drug. I'm, not, I'm a pharmacist. I hate drugs. There are times when you need drugs, but if you have an autoimmune problem, you don't have a naltrexone deficiency disease. All right? There's no such thing as a naltrexone deficiency disease. That having been said, if you're in agony and you've you know, you got some severe pain from an autoimmune problem, multiple sclerosis or whatever it is, and LDN, low-dose naltrexone, it relieves your pain, go for it. You know, I'm all about pain relief. And as much as I hate drugs, analgesics and, and pain-relieving drugs, they're a godsend for anybody dealing with pain. It is not going to solve the problem, although it will mitigate, reduce, or even eliminate, perhaps, the pain, and that's always a good thing. As long as you're doing everything that you need to do to take care of the problem. Remember, pain is the way the body is talking to us. To shut the baby, uh, the body up is like shutting your baby up when your baby's crying. Pain is your, your baby slash body crying. And yes, low-dose naltrexone may help you with the crying, and you may get sick of hearing your baby cry, but you know, yeah, you can wrap duct tape around your baby's mouth and not hear him cry, but that's not gonna help your baby. Likewise, you can put out, take LDN, low-dose naltrexone, for your baby, your body crying, for your body's pain, but that's not gonna help take care of the problem, although it can mitigate and reduce the pain, and that's always, in my opinion, that is a good thing. If I was in pain, I'd want something to get rid of the pain. Does that help you? Yeah, that and uh, you were saying that you had done a program on Vildsmer Stephenson. I yeah. find the diet maybe uh, constipating. Could you comment well, on, yeah, on that you're, diet? Yeah, Ste Stephenson, Vilmar Stephenson, I forgot when we talked about him. It was a few months ago, maybe six months ago or so. Two, uh, he's, two weeks, he's, three weeks. He, I don't remember when it was, but, but in any case, anyway. Stephenson was an explorer who went out to uh, uh, the North Pole, and he noticed that Eskimos were eating all this meat. In fact, most of the year, they would eat just meat and blubber, meat and fat. Fish. And 
and yeah, fish, fish, uh, seal blubber and such, but no vegetables is the point. In fact, no carbohydrates really. And he came back and he said, these guys don't have heart disease. They got a tremendous amount of energy. And he came back and this was the 1920s or so. And we were starting to learn about, hang on a second, Wes. We were starting to learn about nutrition and he came back and he said, you don't need any veggies. You don't need any bread. You don't need any carbs. Well, you can do fine on just, just, just fat and, and meat. And they thought he was crazy. In fact, they actually put him in a room for a year and they watched everything he ate and they tried to, to see if he was lying or he was just a lunatic and it turns out he was healthier on a year of eating just meat and fat and no carbs or very little carbs than, than people who were eating a, a well-rounded diet and he ended up writing a book about it and he's considered to be one of the forebears or one of the, the godfathers of or grandfathers of the ketogenic diet and his name is very difficult to spell and pronounce, Wilhelmar Stephenson, I forgot how he spells his first name but the last name is S T. E-F-F-A-N-S-O-N. He was Swedish or Norwegian, I believe. And, uh, Hello, and he, uh, Iceland. I, born in Iceland. His mom and dad came from Iceland, but he was born in Canada. Oh, he's Canadian. Okay, I think that's true. Uh, in any case, he, uh, uh, he proved to everybody that he wasn't crazy and you could live just fine. In fact, he lost weight and his blood pressure dropped, eating only meat and fat for a year. So uh, that's a great story. You can Google it. Uh, Wilhelm, Wilhelmar Stephenson, S-T-E-F-F-A-N-S-O-N. Wes, I'm going to let you go here, buddy. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. And let's see if we get one more in. Sherry, good morning. Welcome to The Bright Side. Hey, Ben. How are you? Hey. I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as vitamin C, you know, I've heard that most of the vitamin C we get is produced in China, and then a lot of, it, a lot of it's made out of from corn too. That's so true. Most of it is. GMO. Are you aware of any vitamin C that uh, this ascorbic acid um, that is not from a GMO source? Not. You know, I don't know because when once the vitamin C is taken out of the corn, even if the corn is GMO, and I would venture to say most corn is probably GMO, but once the ex, once the vitamin C is taken out, it is no longer even even remotely like corn. It doesn't taste like well, corn. You, it doesn't, you, it doesn't look like corn. Hang on, let me finish real quick. Let me finish. You. Sherry, let me finish real quick, and then I'll let you go. I'll let you say. I'll let you um, uh, talk. Uh, once a substance is extracted from a GMO crop, that substance is not GMO. That substance is an isolated substance that has no resemblance to the corn from which it is derived. So whether it's GMO corn that you get the ascorbic acid from or not, it doesn't really matter at the level of the cell. The GMO, the genetic modification, occurs at the plant level, not at the level of the molecule that is derived from that plant. So it doesn't matter in my opinion. You don't want the corn necessarily. I, I, if it's possible to stay away from GMO corn, which I don't know if it is, I would certainly stay away from anything GMO. But once it, the vitamin C comes out of the corn, it is no longer GMO vitamin C. I'm sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, the biggest biggest thing about GMO is the glyphosate residues, and, you know, they say there's stuff in the... Uh, um, there's no glyphosate in vitamin up. C. Yeah, that's true, and that's, well, there's many problems with GMO, and one of the biggest problems is when they're so-called Roundup Ready, as they say, which means they can absorb more of that nasty glyphosate. And I got a couple letters from somebody who wants, from some folks who want me to talk about glyphosate, uh, and I will be doing that. But just so you know, glyphosate kills bacteria, and this is the biggest problem with glyphosate, because like it kills bacteria in, uh, that would uh, attack plants, it kills bacteria in your gut, too, and it can wreak havoc on digestive health. And I'm not... I, I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that our epidemic of digestive diseases is not at least a little bit related to all the glyphosate and, and GMO crops that we're ingesting. And GMO is definitely not a good thing, nor is glyphosate. But ascorbic acid derived from corn, uh, a GMO corn, I don't know, necessarily know if that's, uh, if that's a GMO product or not. I don't believe it is. All right, that's it for The Bright Side for today. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. Thanks for listening. Please check out my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com if you want to purchase any of the longevity products. And also truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol 5% gel, truth serum, truth balm, truth omega-6 healing cream if you're dealing with aging skin, acne breakouts, or if you just want to prevent them from occurring. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.